G'day everyone, Jai Munji here and I am here with Johannes from Avatar. How are you my friend? Thank you, I'm good. I'm just distracted now looking what you have in the background. So there's always a lot of people, a lot of people. Majora's Mask I recognize and then uh, Darth Maul really of mm. all the Darth. Then I don't know what that uh, the beer thing is, where, where that's from. Uh, okay, see, in Australia, every Australian is required to watch The Simpsons nonstop, and that is the Stein from the Stonecutters episode. Oh, there you go. Okay, now I recognize it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, it's it's not a it's not just Australia. Just no. it's. it's <laughs> do you love the episode with the dollar roos and all that? Mate, that episode is absolutely fantastic. In fact, I remember uh, hearing once upon a time Matt Groening didn't want that episode to ever air, and then the writers are like, "No, trust me, Australians will like it," and it's pretty darn close to what we are we all love being mentioned you know there was and now i mean in more recent now it's probably a decade ago but still in recent and simpson years when they got really not as good anymore but they stuck in the swedish embassy and uh oh. and you just they call death metal <laughs> and swedes love death metal because it makes them think about death you know we all love being mentioned don't we oh exactly Actually, this, the better one is uh when they are in uh Go to Stockholm for the Nobel Prize ceremony, and uh, the cop in the street directing traffic is a naked blonde girl. I remember that's that. Just the, yeah. So wait, are you telling me that doesn't happen over there? Oh, all the time. But you know, in, in but Swedish measures, the she's she's like a seven. Okay, so I guess I know where I'm planning my next holiday. We're all very pretty, <laughs> mate. Tomorrow night, first ever live show in Australia. Do you still get oh, nervous? Yeah. I get nervous for some things, but no, no, <laughs> no. I'm now it's more very happy with it, and because it's our first time here, mm -hmm. like I say. But between these three shows, the fact that we, the fact that number one that we come over headlining the first thing we do, and that between these three shows, it adds up to being tickets sold up in the four digits. When usually, if you go first to headline a show somewhere, first couple of years you play for the bartender and whoever is going to clean up after you, and then you play for five people, then you lose some audience the next time, and then you go play for 20 people in Stuttgart uh, in Germany for 20 decades, and then maybe people show up. So this running start, all things considered, is amazing and uh, we always put ourselves in a mindset we got something to prove and we mm. are very passionate about doing what we do and doing it well and all those things but it, it can't be overstated how special it is when it's truly the first time you know like the first impression foot in the door and all that so yeah there's excitement connected to that and it becomes very motivating but nerves I mean, last time we had proper nerves, and that was the first time in a in a very long time. Was last year we went to Brazil for the first time, but not headline, but opening for Iron Maiden. And there oh. we all went through this regression of uh, mentally we were back being the teenage boys we were when we went to Stockholm to see Maiden as our first little adventure as a band. Once we got to know each other, so, so there we just carried this inner teenager with us up on stage for that for the first show we did with them but we're not playing with our maiden here you know we, we're playing with ourselves and we play with ourselves a lot so, so we'll manage no and that's a big thing as well and i was going to bring it up but you already kind of answered the question it is very rare the band especially i'd say european bands in particular come down and headline their first two especially at a place like um i'm going to the sydney show the metro theater that was a big venue mm -hmm. i thought wow first time here you're not announcing any international support and you're doing the Metro. I was like, good on you. Like, it's going to be amazing. That's actually probably my favorite venue in Sydney to uh, attend as well. So uh, okay. you, you picked a good one. It's a good sound quality, good venue. Like, you're going to enjoy that. All this closure, I don't think the band had much to do with what venue we ended up in. <laughs> no, no, no. And I'm sure there will be room for growth uh, in there as well. But that being said, no, well, Good venues are good. Yeah, of course. But I've got to ask you before I ask any other band-related questions, the most important question of all. Have you managed to see a kangaroo or koala yet? Not yet. We've been we've very much the inner city of Melbourne. And uh, as nice as it is, and I've been going around, seen very colorful birds where, you know, that bird life where we are from would be 
way way browner overall um so th that tickled me um <laughs> I, I took a screenshot of the name of the bird. It's actually the, the highlight so far so uh, that I saw. Uh, bear with me. Yeah, uh, this is quality quality interview time right now. Uh, but the, the highlight of the tour so far was that I saw um, rainbow lorikeets. Yeah, uh, up in Sydney. A whole bunch. Yeah, don't see them around. At least where I live, you don't see them around too much. We see something called, uh, and you're going to see one. Uh, ask Chris about it. Called a bin chicken. He'll explain that to you later. Uh, so I've been told about it already. <laughs> our our um, Scottish guitar tech, who is uh, way more in tune with, um, I don't know how people feel about being called Commonwealth, but you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, form he was grump grumpy about not having seen a bin chicken yet as of last night. So uh, you will. Uh, so no, I, I've heard about that. But yeah, also the whole kangaroo thing. That's the one thing that I feel like this trip well emus are even cooler in one way or even considering the famous emu war i still feel the kangaroo is more iconic but also my wife threatened to divorce me if i get to see a kangaroo without her getting to see a kangaroo at the same time or before me so i don't know if that's a risk i'm willing to take yes it is I, I, it, it, I see one <laughs> well if you see one just say you saw a wallaby anyway they're, they're about the same they're just kind of like the shorter less cool version of the kangaroo yeah, everything everything you have here that you don't that we don't have at home will be will bother her that i saw without her <laughs> except maybe all the poisonous stuff we have and all the venomous snakes they're, they're not oh a, she's arachnophobic but i'm told again that this so-called winter you got going for yourself here is uh and makes it less of an issue this time of the year. No, you're, you're right. It's funny. Our uh, spiders and uh, all of our creepy crawlies, they're very, they, they like, they're summer boys. They're summer boys and girls. And uh, yeah, yeah, they don't like the cold. They, yeah, they, yeah, not anywhere around. But we'll get back on topic. We can talk about kangaroos and koalas and spiders till the cows come home. But speaking of touring, my wife actually asked this question. She was curious. She goes, hey, out of all the times, because you've been touring for what? 20 years now, if not mm -hmm. minus COVID. Is there anything that stands out to you as a really interesting interaction with a fan or a moment on stage or really bizarre interaction with a fan or moment on stage that you can talk about? It's so funny how when asked that question, all, you never remember a single moment like the answer is yes tons yeah <laughs> but off the top of my head it's always you always draw blanks like that it's like a quiz in pop quiz in school um the answer is yes. Sorry. <laughs> hey, look, it's like asking me what I had for breakfast yesterday. I, I'm sure I had breakfast yesterday. I'm not going to remember it. So I completely understand. Yeah, I had a bagel. And I had, I had a, a pickle. Um, but that's not very bizarre. No, things happen all the time, but you get used to it, I guess. Um, yes, yeah, sorry. Nothing. I, no. I, yeah, blank page. No, maybe maybe something will happen. I'm the ones that I realized all these years. <laughs> behind my own back hey look um speaking of the shows as well if you there's still tickets available to a couple of shows coming up um if you had to convince someone in oh, i got five fingers five words or less why they should come see avatar live what would you say to them i need to pay mortgage <laughs> no no to give a long answer that actually might be some more so i've been doing this you know we put out this album this year called dance devil dance mm. and it's literally in my job description to call every latest album you put we put out the best one we've done so far right that being said i truly feel that dance devil dance is the best album we've done so far i absolutely agree thank you what's wrong with other ones no, but uh <laughs> specifically because they are the songs we hit another level of focus with the songs i feel mm. where this emotional coherence song by song whereas in the past a song would have been you know a little bit angry a little bit sad and a little bit horny right and now at this point in time it feels more it's, it feels important to divide that into three songs instead one is just a little bit sad one is just a little bit angry and one is a little bit horny and make three songs instead of one uh, one that is that kind of wild ride yeah and I'm, i that with that i felt we hit a new level and that also reflects i think with the shows that we've been putting on this year that we are not just we not just as good as we ever been i think we are better than we ever been as a band and i don't know 
maybe people just the only people that write to me on social media are the ones who have something nice to say but uh, look for yourself uh how people describe our live show and us as a live band and uh it's not me saying it but we are a must see mm. um event so, you know what, what are you going to do about it i've seen that everything you, you see say. plastered about avatar is it's metal's best live act and i've watched a couple of interviews of yours in the past and you seem very confident that you can live up to that is it because you've been called metal's best live act is does that drive you to make sure that every show is a hundred percent regardless of if you're feeling sick if you know jet lag for example i'm sure the jet lag's kicking in does that help you push yeah. through it yeah but i mean I, I maybe i would push even harder if we were called metal's worst live act then we'll be yeah. more things no i'm just really confident in what we're doing i feel i mean what we do as songwriters and what we put together is still fairly eclectic then we try to make it well articulated and to the point with each individual piece of it mm. but if you start to piece together what ends up in a set list it's quite a journey and we have just gotten better i think in treating the show as a whole as a composition of its own the set list and then how you visualize it and what bells and whistles you bring with you on stage and no yeah like i think i actually got to talk with i think it's when you combine your various influences also so for instance uh, i was talking to hans kirsch from blind guardian oh. uh, that uh, me and my wife run a podcast ourselves called metal break scene now plug that too good yep. <laughs> and uh, so uh, and he he's one of those huge influences that i'm even in a band to begin with and he was talking about when you start out and you just listen to whoever you listen to like his example was Deep Purple. As a singer, you want you try to sound like Ian Gillan on Child in Time. And mm -hmm. at the time, you don't hear that there are overdubs and harmonies and stuff. So you just push the envelope in what you do yourself to imitate a studio production, which kind of raises the bar constantly. And because, I don't know, Highway Star sounded like the fastest song of all time at the time. Then you try to play really fast and then comes the evolution from heavy metal to thrash metal to speed metal and the envelope that is being pushed when you put everything together. And I mean, we want to be as heavy and intricate as uh, all those technical death metal bands that we started out covering when learning to play while wanting to put on a show, you know, striving towards being having production values of uh, everything from Rammstein to Judas Priest and all mm -hmm. those kind of things, while also be groovy and funky like a monkey leg. I, I don't know, uh, what was the article? Parliament or something. You know, those kind of, and put all of that together and you want to run around and or be as intense as the Ramones while being intricate as Cryptopsy while running, you know, moving like our maiden and all these things together and then try to make sense. Of it. And I guess, I don't know, all that comes into pushing the envelope of what, what we feel a metal show should be right now, uh, you know, at this point. And uh, we're not circus metal. That's a silly term. I don't know what it is, but we are a metal circus and it's worth checking out. Yeah, no, I can agree. That's actually a very good analogy about your band because that was kind of segueing into what I was going to ask you next. When you first started out, you talked about it, all the music and, you know, combining all these elements to create your own sound. Mm -hmm. Did you visually go, okay, this music, the stage presentation needs to match it as well? How how did you come up with the, I wouldn't say it's theatre, but it is very theatric. Um, exactly. An avatar, yeah, an avatar show. Very good distinction because that's the way exactly where you as well that theater i mean i've been to the theater i've seen opera and ballet and like it but that is something that's very much supposed to be one certain thing mm. on stage then you have performing arts that is more everything between stand-up comedy and professional wrestling to a rock and roll show that is more of a dependent on a give and take with the audience and yeah. because we're not so locked in and constant theater then it's like i say theatrical rather yeah and i think and it and, uh, what, extremely well <laughs> what was the question though sorry i know i cut no you no that was basically talking. it i was basically saying like what what made you want to go down the theatrical path like it's not there's so many bands out there there's a million bands out there right um and when people think of theatrical bands you might get alice mm -hmm. cooper 
I guess you could even say Iron Maiden uh, to an extent. But what oh, made yeah. you want to kind of match that energy to say someone who just gets up there, guitar, bass, drum, singer, and just tries to be a bit of more of a hype man rather than putting on a full show like you guys do? I think it came first simply that that is the kind of things that we liked growing up. Mm. We mentioned Alice Cooper and we can mention Kiss is up high there for us. Hammerstein is up high there. Our main is up very high. Uh, Michael Jackson is up very high. And for me, actually, pro wrestling is super high. Like I wanted to be a pro wrestler when I was five before I got into music, you know, all those kind of things combined in terms of influences and then but then it's an evolution i mean it wasn't there to begin with and as a matter of fact we did three albums that weren't part that that didn't have that theatrical yeah. concept we were always looking for something but uh growing up learning how to do this together you also you first have to learn to ask the right questions so we were looking for something and it was only when we did the album black walls and the music video for black walls where the circumstances called for Oh, while I sing in this video, I need to look like something. Oh, how about a scared clown? Yeah, cool. Let's try that. And then it just clicked and, oh, there it is. This is what our music looks like. And that's that abstract question that you don't even know to ask yourself. Maybe when you start out as a teenager, mm. like, what does your music look like? Because music looks like nothing. But at the same time, it does. So there was a discovery along the way. And then it's just been, then we've been, it's still the path we're on. And it's still a lot to discover and develop with it yeah no and it's funny that you mentioned uh you know wanting to be a pro wrestler as a kid and you grew up to be a rock star it's funny i wanted to grow up to uh be a rock star and ended up being a pro wrestler myself that's my weekend uh kind of shtick oh really yeah 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 awesome. i uh do the tours around australia but it's funny i showed you guys to a friend of mine who's now going to the show in sydney he's very excited um soon as i showed he goes Oh, that reminds me of Chris Jericho. Did Chris Jericho take his look? So it's kind of interesting. He went straight to a pro wrestler uh, when describing yeah, you guys. I saw the Rainmaker era yeah. in New Japan. I'm not the first person who put some black paint here, yeah. there, and everywhere, you know? And I'm sure Chris Jericho is also an Alice Cooper fan, like the rest of us, and all those things, you know? Mm. That being said, we have met way before <laughs> that I saw that happen. He handed out, an, uh, he was hosting an award show in London way before that happened, where we also performed. But um, so, I don't know, he also wears a hat, so <laughs> a wore a hat at that time. So, uh, mm, yeah, mm -hmm. maybe. Hey. Maybe a little bit. He know he knows who you are. Maybe a little bit. Let's just let's just say the pain maker is uh is inspired by Avatar. Look, as you reflect on your um, journey in music, and I wouldn't be surprised if you were to say the new album or even the tour of Iron Maiden, but what do you think was the biggest accomplishment to date for Avatar? Those it's not those kind of things mm. for me. Because it, it, the fact that we have remained, uh, sh except for one guy quit and Tim joined the band, but we we have had known Tim since forever anyway. Mm. Um, but aside from that member change, we are the same lineup as we were when we did our first demo and started to actually write songs. Um, and that that friendship and this brotherhood and this sense of family that we have has that we, you know, we started in the middle of puberty, survived our 20s yeah, with everything that entices. And now, you know, being some kind of, you know, on the surface level, grown men supposedly together. And that 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 is a crowning achievement that we keep on achieving. And that feels like the big highlight because the job description what it boils down to and it's clearly defined for us at this point exactly what are we here to do what do we want to do what's mm. the job and it is we want to write and perform our own material take the band as far as we can while remaining friends and that's it you know yeah. that's it and the remaining friends part is the thing that has brought us this far and at times maybe we need to make some choices then that would be short-term a hindrance for what people maybe would think would further our careers and stuff but we're in it for the long haul and the fact that we can keep the integrity of that no matter what else is going on that's that's a big highlight and because we focus on that then there are tons of you know memories uh, that is that are directly connected to 
career things, like you mentioned, Iron Maiden or opening for other heroes of ours or touring with them, you know, Halloween, Devin Townsend uh, did an amazing show with Good Cheer uh, this summer in France on my birthday and all these, oh. those kind of things. Then just also sometimes you get chart positions and stuff or or they give you a little trophy. Well, well, we literally got one or two actually, and that's it. But still, we had those. And then the little things of uh, getting to park the bus by the Grand Canyon at uh, as the sun rises and those kind of things. Uh, so those things just keep on coming constantly based on that we focus on, you know, what what's the what's the mission statement and that would make touring a lot easier too like you said friends it's i've heard horror stories of bands throughout the years i think motley crew is probably the most well documented one of them all kind of hating each other going around touring so because you guys work you two are a lot and uh to see such a minimal minimal lineup change just one person i thought was just quite unreal in over 20 years so i applaud you for that as well and going back to what you said a bit before opening for heroes I really did like the song you did with Lizzie on the new album. If there was any other musician you could collaborate with, living or dead, who would it be? The thing with that, uh, with doing that with Lizzie, the beauty of it was that it truly started with the song mm. in the sense of it had written some very good riffs. I started to do vocals. I had listened to Simon and Garfunkel that day. So I started to do, you know, harmonizing vocals all the way and like, Huh, this is this is not backup vocals. This is this is a duet. Mm. Who can we call? Who 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 do we know? And uh, and you know, Lacey, one of the greatest voices of our time, with an ability to go incredible. Like you know, I mean, Hailstone go pretty hard, but Lacey can go hard. You know. Yeah. And uh, speaking of bands that are close, and you know, that sense of family within a group, we identify we relate a lot to to them in that sense that they have that closeness that we have as well so i mean i can answer that question in the sense of which artists do i really really like but i don't really insert myself in that thing of uh, you know of mm. uh, wanting to collaborate with someone just because i admire them then it would be more it would be cool to do something at some point again with bjorn risberg or johnny saxon which are you know friends from back in the day, high school friends who are also musicians. Yeah. So it's more like that. Oh, we never got to start a band or I had a band with someone until Avatar turned out to be the the right choice to make at some point when 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 I had to. So it's more like I would say Bjorn Rispad, he played bass for a while and then guitar for a while in Avatar, but he's a professional cello player at this point. Oh. So probably the best musician I played with. Um, but, the whole band played with so yeah i would like to do something with him and last i heard he's alive so that's good oh that that's that's handy as well so uh yeah we, we like that uh look uh thank you so much for your time today mate i know you like i said you're probably jet lagged i hope you're feeling great i hope you're excited for the show tomorrow did you have any kind of final words i did the sales pitch didn't i yeah i did yeah you did the sales pitch yeah good so you know I am the devil, but I believe if you try really hard, one day you can be the devil too. And I don't think we could have a better ending than that. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Well, there you go, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. What a nice guy. Tickets are on sale now. You've still got a chance. What else are you going to do this weekend? This is the first time Avatar have ever come down here, and they're called Metal's Best Live Band for a reason. So, Go buy them. I will link that below. And if you want to see more interviews like this, because they're coming, go over and check out the Metal Rouge channel, because that's where I'm going to be posting most of these. Don't worry. Jai Munji content is going to happen like normal. But if you want to see some interviews, uh, some gig reviews, all that, over on the Metal Rouge page, they've got the website, they've got the YouTube channel. I will be linking that below as well. Go give them some love. Go hit subscribe on their channel and tell them Jai Munji sent you. I think it would mean the world and it would mean the absolute world to me, even if just a handful of you do it. So please. But until next time, I've been Jai Munji. I better see you at Avatar. So you all have a good one.